Hey, Year 10s, thanks for coming along. Today we're gonna to be looking at metal extraction and we're gonna be looking at this from a very distinct perspective. We're looking at it from a redox perspective. I had a, I had one of my subscribers. Today we're gonna be looking oh, at metal oh, extraction. Oh, let's go into that. Um, I had somebody on my YouTube channel, one of my, one of my subscribers ask me to do a lesson on redox. Now, I'm very aware that this lesson is very, very, very challenging. This is the hardest lesson I've taught you so far in year 10. And we're gonna have some year nine, some level nine content. So I will make a distinct point of that when we get to it, just to show you where the level of difficulty jumps. Um, but we are looking at it from a redox perspective, from this reduction and oxidation perspective, and looking at it in terms of oxygen and electrons. It is, a, it is a tough lesson. It is very important for you guys to use this lesson in revision for your, for your upcoming assessment. I've only got two more lessons after this, um, looking specifically at some metals, uh, one on aluminium, and one on iron, and one on titanium. Um, I'll probably do the aluminium and iron though together. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna crack on with today's lesson. So I'm gonna share screen. Um, I'm also going to get rid of my, I've popped out the chat window on the YouTube video so I can get rid of that. It means it should run a little bit better. I'll put my pop-up chat window over there. I'll get rid of my face because we don't need it. I'm also going to then turn off my webcam because it, it means that, and I did that last time with you. Anyway, hi guys. So my laptop crashed again. Wow. So irritated. Can't believe that. And it happened to be, I've done this all day as well, and none of them have crashed apart from you guys. So upsetting. Right, let's try that again. Uh, I don't know whether or not to try turning off my webcam or not. I don't know if that's a good idea at all. Let's have a look. Oh, that's so upsetting. Right, device manager. It's really annoying that it should not, I can't believe it's just done that twice the second time. Guys, if it crashes this time, then I'm just gonna leave it running. <sighs> so upsetting, right? Fingers crossed. Don't crash, don't crash. Fine, at least now it seems to have done it okay. Fine, okay, see you guys. Hello, I know it was very funny, I know. Right, let's crack on with the lesson. Okay. I was all set up, ready to go, all there. Right, so those are today's learning objectives. The first thing I'm gonna do is go through the homework. Okay, so most metals are extracted from ore. Why does, let's go for uh, draw, there we go. Go for black, I think that's about the right size, yeah. Why does gold, why does gold not need to be extracted from ore? Two marks, this is folks. Oh, I'm gonna shrink my pen again, shrink it, there we go. So one mark is for saying gold is very unreactive. I will also allow you to say the word inert. I can also allow you to say that. Yeah, it's very unreactive. So does not, does not um, react to form compounds. Doesn't, you can just put does not form compounds. Yeah, so what that means is it is not gold oxide, it's not gold chloride, it is just gold. Yeah, so two marks. One, it's very unreactive. Two, it doesn't form compounds. Next, iron is extracted from an ore. What is an ore? So this is bullet point number one, a rock. A rock 
with enough metal, enough metal stroke metal compounds, metal compound, uh, second point, to make it, to make it worth while worthwhile extracting. This is about profit. Yeah, you can actually put, so you can make a profit. Two marks as well, tick, tick. Next, calcium is extracted by electrolysis. Explain why calcium cannot be extracted by heating it with carbon. Uh, calcium, calcium is, a, well, I don't know what that word is there. Calcium is above carbon, above carbon, in reactivity you can say is more reactive than carbon that's totally fine any words to this effect is above carbon in reactivity so cannot second mark so cannot displace it i like it next two marks tick tick that's two next explain why the extraction why this extraction involves a reduction reaction right so it's extracted by electrolysis. Now this is this is actually a level eight question. This is one of the higher ones. This is where redox comes into play. Do you notice that it's calcium chloride, not calcium oxide? That means you can't say because it's it's losing oxygen. What we need to say is we need to do this in terms of electrons. Now in calcium chloride, metals, when they're in compounds are charged, we know that metals become positive. So in this case, the reduction, why is, is, is it reduction? It's because calcium gains electrons. Yeah, so I know that's really hard, folks. So in electrolysis, electrons are being, oh, I've suddenly realized that my other video actually, I believe, is running. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to split out the chat. Uh, I can't do that now. Um, oh, that's irritating. Oh, oh, that's, that's, oh, that's my StreamYard bit. Oh, okay. Uh, YouTube doesn't seem to be there. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's that's interesting. So my stream yard's running on the other screen. Okay, sorry, ignore me. Uh, it means that I can't see your chat. That's why I suddenly realized I can't. Uh, do you know what? I'm gonna have to go without the chat today, folks. You can actually put on chat. I've got Jack who still said hello. I do have it on my stream yard feed, so I'll just leave it there. Um, yeah, so explain why this instruction is in terms of redox. So this is rig, yeah? Reduction is the gain of electrons. Calcium, I've given you the half, this is called a half equation, which is really tough, it's part of today's lesson. Yeah, it's a half equation. Calcium gains electrons. Yeah, I know that's really tough. Yeah, because there was no oxygen, if it had been the fact that the ox, if it had been calcium oxide, yeah, and it forms calcium metal, you could have said because it's losing oxygen. But in this case, there's no oxygen. Next, oh. One method of extracting zinc, involve, zinc involves reacting zinc oxide with carbon. Explain in terms of oxygen and electrons why this reaction involves a reduction. Okay. Oh, by the way, in terms of marks wise, yeah, calcium gains electrons. That's only one mark. Yeah, just so you know, it's only one mark that, folks, you don't need the half equation. Yeah, so just, just the gains electrons. Right. So zinc oxide. So uh, explain why this in terms of oxygen. Zinc oxide loses, loses oxygen, loses oxygen, brackets, reduction, reduction is the loss of, oxidation is the gain of oxygen, reduction is the loss of oxygen, so it's going to become zinc, yeah, so the zinc oxide, zinc oxide is going to be reacted with carbon, the carbon is more reactive, so that becomes carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and zinc, yeah, there we go. So the zinc zinc oxide loses oxygen. What we can you can actually just say the zinc loses oxygen. I don't mind you saying that. That's okay. So hang on a minute. Reduction. Reduction is that. So then we say zinc is gaining electrons. That's just them wanting you to comment on reduction in terms of electrons, and that's remembering oil rig. Yeah, oil rig. So reduction is the gain of electrons. Zinc is gaining. Sorry, gaining electrons. Two marks. Two marks. Next, lead is extracted by heating it with carbon. Explain why lead can be extracted by heating with carbon. Lead is lower in reactivity, in reactivity compared to carbon. Compared to carbon. Second mark, carbon. 
can displace lead. Carbon can therefore can displace, ah, sorry, sorry, displace lead. We're done. Two marks. Douche, douche, douche. Winner. Next, explain why this is a redox reaction. Right. So if we look at the equation, there it is. So what's happening? So the lead, lead oxide, lead oxide is losing oxygen, right? Losing oxygen is reduction, is losing oxygen, therefore is reduction, sorry. Next mark, carbon is gaining oxygen, is gaining oxygen. This is oxidation. So two marks so far, tick and tick. Yeah, third mark, they happen, they happen at the same time. The same time. Brackets, redox. I like it. I hope that's useful. Um, oh, got an email off Lauren saying she's sorry she can't be here. Oh. So total marks, folks, for the homework, two, four, six, seven. So that's three marks at the end. The last one is three. So two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 plus three, 14 marks for that homework. So guys, what you can do is you can mark your own and then just add. Sorry, hang on a minute. I'm just gonna bring my score sheet over to this side. Yeah, you can add your marks onto this, onto your homework sheet. Vincent and Ian, you need to add your homework results from the reactivity one that we had before. Yeah, so what was it out of? Was it out of 13, did I say? Did I say 13, Angel? I'm talking to my other half, by the way. Show the couch. Yeah. There we go. So I think it's out of 13. Did I say 13? Did I say 14? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's out of 14. 14, 14, it's out of 14. There we go, 14. Winner. So you can add your scores to that sheet when you can. Please try and do it by the end of the lesson. That would be grand. Right, I'm gonna continue with my lesson. So today's lesson, guys, is a really tough level. Um, it's a really, really higher level lesson. So write and combining half equations. So that there, writing and combining half equations, this is level nine. That's really tough, that. Identifying, oxidizing, and reducing agents, that's also a level eight. This is a tough lesson today. Okay, and then I want to talk to you about galvanizing in terms of electrons and oil rig again. So we're gonna focus on, on oil, understanding of oil rig. So you can pause the video there if you want to uh, record those learning objectives down, and you can level them as well, it's always useful. So let's have a look at galvanizing. So. Okay, so galvanizing. I just want to look at this from a galvanizing. So galvanizing is um, the process, the process of covering, covering a metal. It doesn't actually have to be a metal, by the way. It can actually be completed other things as well. But in this case, co covering a metal with the element zinc, with zinc. So this is the this is the, an idea of protection. So what you can do is you can take a bar of iron, which we know rusts, and we know how special rusting is now. So if we take iron metal, which we know rusts, we can now cover it in a thin layer of zinc. And the zinc is rather pretty. It has this rather crystalline structure, especially if you do it dipped, dipped galvanization, where they dip it into liquid zinc. And that zinc then, of course, solidifies around it. So we've got a layer a top layer, layer of zinc protection. Now, the great thing about this, now this is why I need to look at it from an electron standpoint, because one of the things is, this seems like an awful lot of work to cover something in zinc when you could just simply paint it. Like that's the other option. I'm suddenly realizing I can't see the chat anymore. I'm trying to find it. Sorry guys, hang on. Uh, StreamYard, there we go. Oh, Zyna's here, nice to see you, Zyna. 
Um, so wh why why would it be any better than just adding on paint? So we can paint an object. We could paint a piece of iron. Yeah, but the first thing is we realize that paint's not as good because it can chip. Now you can chip, you could scratch zinc. Yeah, you could certainly scratch zinc, but zinc of course is a metal, so A, it's much tougher. Yeah, the difference there is the fact that you're covering it in a metal and metals are, are strong. Yeah, so the other option is to cover it in zinc. This is galvanizing. It also looks pretty as well because it's silver and shiny. There we go. Now there's a second kicker though. The reason being is if you scratch it, so let's now zoom in. Let's now zoom in on this area right here. Oh, made that way too thick. Let's zoom in on this area here. Yeah, so let's imagine, let's imagine that we scratch the surface of the zinc. Here's the iron and here's our zinc surface, which we're now gonna scratch. There we go. So you can see the scratch that I've actually created this is the scratch now the great thing about this is is when you scratch zinc what happens is the iron becomes exposed to the air and to water paint can flake off absolutely right ian so you would think that this would be the same for zinc you scratch it it's going to rust now the amazing thing is it doesn't the reason being is what happens is that the oxygen in the air can get to the iron and what it's going to do is it's going to bond to it and it's going to form iron oxide. So we could look at it like this. We can go iron plus oxygen goes to iron oxide and it's iron three oxide as well since it's rust. Yeah, but here's the cool thing. You have got a more reactive metal on top of the surface right next door to it. So what immediately happens is the zinc will react with the iron oxide and it will take the oxygen off it and form iron metal again. So you actually, I need to balance all my equations. I hate not balancing them. Two uh, common denominator for the oxygen, uh, two and three and four. Yeah, and then the second equation I need to balance as well. So I'm gonna need a two, I'm gonna need a three, and I'm gonna need a three, nightmare. But the cool thing is that, that the zinc takes the oxygen immediately. So you're going so fast. I'm still on the definition of galvanizing. Uh, I totally get that, Jack. I'm so sorry. The process of covering a metal with zinc. Yeah, fair enough. Sorry, Jack. I'll slow down. It is a tough lesson. I'm worried about not finding out 30 minutes left, and I'm still so far from finishing. Okay. So because the zinc is nearby it will take the oxygen immediately from the iron. Now, here's the problem. These equations are awesome. This is so, the zinc actually stops the iron from rusting even if it's scratched, because it goes through a displacement. We need to look at this in terms of electrons. And this is what makes this really hard, because you don't, this isn't even fair, because, because you haven't done atomic structure, we haven't done bonding yet, so you're not really entirely understanding of the concept of atoms. I did do a little bit of it at the beginning, but it's really tough. So, so here's what's happening. This reaction, oxidation, I'm gonna, this is, I'm really having to think quite hard about this now. Right, Oxi so oxidation, oxidation of iron. So you've scratched, yeah, this is the iron in the scratch, iron in scratch, scratch, right. So the iron will react with oxygen to form iron oxide. Iron plus oxygen goes to iron oxide. Now, what we need is iron three oxide, by the way, because that's rust. Got to know that, by the way, please learn it. Yeah, iron oxide, iron three oxide is rust. Now, I want to look at this in terms of electrons. So what's happening here is the iron metal is reacting with oxygen and is becoming iron three plus. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. So the iron becomes iron three plus when it's rusting and it loses three electrons. This is where oxidation is loss of electrons. Yeah, oxidation, oxidation is loss of electrons. 
And you can see that from this equation. Yeah, because the electrons are being spat out. Yeah. And so loss, oxidation is loss, and that's coming out. Reduction is the gain, and gain has the word in it. Yeah. So that's the rusting process. So what's happening in terms of the galvanized protection? This is what makes this so hard. So what's happening is, so the zinc, the zinc coating. So when the iron, the iron on the surface, we zoom right in, and this is where I need to do my zinc scratch again. There we go. There we go. So the iron at this point here is going to become rusty. It's going to become iron three plus. Yeah, that becomes iron plus three. Now, what immediately happens? It, by the way, it can also become iron two plus. And in fact, if you have the, uh, if you've only got the iron two plus option, then that's what you go for. Now, here's what happens: the zinc next door gives its electrons to it. So the zinc gives two electrons to become zinc two plus and loses two electrons. This is a half equation. Half equations are reaction are equations that include electrons. It's not even fair considering you haven't even done bonding yet, which means you haven't even done balancing equations or formulae. It's not fair. I'm gonna mention this by the way, and I'm gonna change the test because it's not fair this. I shouldn't be doing this. So the zinc will give its electrons. These electrons are being lost by the zinc, but they're then going to get given to the iron. So let's just call it iron two plus to make it easier. Those two electrons, which zinc has lost, these two electrons that the zinc has lost get given to the iron two plus and turn it back into iron metal, hence no rust. I know that's really, really hard guys. Now this is where we've got two equations here, one where electrons, electrons are being lost, electrons lost. Yeah, and the other one, electrons gained. I always like to, rem to remind people that the word gain has the word in in it. So these are going in, yeah? So one's being lost, one's being gained. What that means is you can put these two equations together if you ever get given equations like this and you get asked to combine them, just, just cancel out the electrons. So the two electrons being produced here get used up here and the, two, and the equation comes together to be everything on one side. So the zinc on this side, I'm gonna do it in green, plus the iron two on this side, change my color, goes with, I'm so sorry, it's so hard, goes with the zinc two plus on that side of the equation and then iron on that side of the equation. So I'm just putting the two together and the electrons disappear. I know that's really, really hard, guys. It's really, it's not really fair. I'm gonna mention this, uh, but yeah, just stick with me. I'm so sorry, I'm gonna give you another example of this. So let's say I'm given, what we need to do is we need to have a practice of this happening. Mr. Duncan, wouldn't it be zinc minus two electrons instead of zinc two plus? No, Zyna. So, okay, the internet is full of, uh, and by the way, Edexcel and more ones as well. Can I just point out, you should never minus electrons. You should only ever add electrons. That's there. One should come out and one should be going in and they should always be on opposite sides. Uh, yeah, I know. And you know what? that's actually a problem, of course, because even at Excel, use this every now and again. Don't, don't worry about it, Zyna. Just, just don't do it because it's it's bad chemistry. You can't lose, you can't have minus two electrons. You can't do that. You can have them spat out somewhere else, but you can't, and, and just to explain what Zyna's talking about, technically you could do this. Zinc minus two electrons goes to zinc two plus. I hate that, that is terrible chemistry. You can't do that, that's bad chemistry. Yeah, because taking away two electrons sounds like they're disappearing. They're not. They're appearing over on this side. And if you see this on the internet, just reply to them on the internet saying, this is garbage chemistry. Mr. Duncan says so. Yeah, it is. It's terrible chemistry. I hate it. Yeah, just so you know. But don't worry, you don't need it for this one. So, okay, back to this again. Let's do another example. Let's say I have copper. Now, copper metal 
Oh, let's do it this way. Copper oxide. Copper oxide reacts with hydrogen to form what? Now, this is where the, the, the reactivity series comes in handy. Potassium, mm, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, 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 zinc, iron, tin, lead, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen copper, right? So hydrogen is above copper in reactivity. So what that means is it's going to steal. And I'm going to have Cu plus H2O. Yeah, they actually it steals because it's, but they are losing, but you are losing them, right? Yeah, so Zyna, I, I understand that, but losing is about this is lost. Yet when something is spat out of an equation, that's being lost. You can't minus two electrons from somebody. Yet you can just show them that they're appearing somewhere else. I know, don't worry about it, Zyna. Just stick with the plus way round. If you want to do it in the negative, you can. I'll allow it, but I don't like it. So what we can now say is that the copper, the copper, so we can immediately say that the copper oxide is being reduced. That there is being reduced. It's being reduced because it's losing oxygen. Yeah, losing oxygen. Now, just to show you what's happening in terms of electrons, the copper is actually in a plus two state and is forming copper metal. So we can now see how we balance that equation with electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons, and it's going to gain two of them. Electrons are negative, so they're negative, and the Cu is positive, so they're going to go on that side with it. Opposites attract. So that loses it. Now, what's happening in terms of hydrogen? Hydrogen starts off as a charge state of zero. The hydrogen is actually forming 2H plus, uh, we can actually we can actually balance this. Oh. It's forming H2O. Now you'll notice that I took the copper out for its charge state. This is actually hydrogen in a plus one state. Oh, I'm making this harder. And the electrons go on that side. I'm so sorry, I have to balance. Oh, it's way too hard, this lesson. I'm so sorry. This is, this is rubbish. They're making me do stuff which, it would be fine if you guys had covered bonding already. It'd be absolutely fine. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, yeah, the electrons cancel out, they disappear, and you just put everything together. Cu2 plus plus hydrogen goes to Cu plus 2H pluses. Uh, I know this is an absolute nightmare, guys. That was a terrible example. Shouldn't have done that one. Hydrogen was a bad choice. Anyway, gain of oxygen. Ugh. Not doing a very good job of this at the minute. So, got to go back to my learning objectives. Galvanizing in terms of electrons. We've done that now. We're reminding ourselves of oxidation and reduction, and then writing and combining half equations and identifying oxidizing agents and reducing agents. Ugh. Right, now guys, what I can tell you is the fact that you're not going to be writing half equations. You're not gonna be doing this, yeah? Because that is not yet within your, it, it's part of year 11. Actually, no, actually, it's part of, part of year 10. It is part of year 10. But what I need to get you to do is, all I want you to do is you guys need to be able to combine, combine half equations. So they're going, actually, do you know what? You do need to, anyway, combine half equations. <sighs> so <clears throat> I'm going to give you two half equations to combine. Question number one, how are we doing for time-wise? Question one. So let's do um, uh, a nice sodium going to sodium one plus and one electron. And then I'm going to do, um, oh, made this, and let's go for, <sighs> this is horrible. Change my mind. Calcium going to calcium two plus, plus two electrons, and then uh, chlorine plus two electrons goes to two chlorides. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, can you pause the video now and put those two equations together, please? If you if you don't know how to do it, don't worry, keep watching. I'll then go through the answer and then I'll give you another one. So what happens is the electrons cancel. Yeah, electrons cancel. 
because they're on opposite sides of the equation and they have the same number. So everyone else now goes together. So divide the divide it in half, right? Everything on this side goes onto that side. So CA plus CL2 goes to CA2 plus and two CL minuses. You just put them together. Cancel the electrons out and then put everyone together. Let's go for another question. Have a go at this one. Question number two. Question number two. Try doing this one. Aluminium, three plus, plus three electrons, goes to aluminium. And then we can go to um, and then O2 minus going to oxygen. Right, now this one's harder. Plus four electrons, eek. Right, now guys, there's a problem here. I was trying to line up, by the way. I'm just gonna go for that, plus O2, O2 plus four electrons. Let's say you're given these two. Now there's a problem now in this, this scenario. The top equation, the top equation says in three electrons. This equation says out four electrons. Now you can't have leftover electrons. It can't exist. So what that means is you've got to multiply equations up so that the electrons match. So the way that you do this is the common denominator. I've gone too hard again. So I've got three electrons here and four over here. If I multiply the two numbers together, I get 12. So if I times that reaction there by four, four of those, 12 of those, and four of those, if I times this one by three, I get six of those, three of those, and 12 of those. Right, the electrons now match. Now I can put them together. Yeah, so they cancel out, put everybody together. So four, divide it in half, just find your lines. Yeah, so four aluminium three pluses plus six O2 minuses goes to four aluminiums plus three oxygens. I know that's horrible. I'm gonna give you another easy one. That was that was way too hard. Let's give, go for another easy one. Question number three. <sighs> it's so stupid. I'm so sorry, guys. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm gonna edit the, I'm... <sighs> anyway, question three. Have a go at this one. Um, iron two plus, iron two plus, going to, gaining two electrons, going to iron, and then calcium, going to calcium two plus and two electrons. Right, put them together. Put those two, elect those two equations together. Pause the video, have a go. Electrons on opposite sides. Fe2 plus, plus a calcium, goes to Fe plus calcium 2 plus. <sighs> it's a nightmare. Right, now we need to talk about oxidizing and reducing agents. Uh, so what we can now say is who's being oxidized, who's being reduced? Right, oil rig, oil rig, oxidation, Oxidation is loss of electrons. Who's losing electrons? Calcium is. Because if you lose electrons, you become positive. That's oxy. That's ox. Yep. Next, what's iron doing? Iron is going from being positive. I've ruined all my pens. To iron. So that's red. That's red because reduction, red is gain of electrons. And that's going, and if you gain electrons, you become more negative. And in this case, the Fe2 plus is becoming, you, you can look at this in terms of a ladder if you like. If you call that zero, if you go up the ladder in terms of charge, that way is oxidation. Yeah, if you go down the ladder, uh, Minus one, minus two, minus three. Get rid of that one. Do that there. That's being reduced. You're coming down in charge. So 
iron is going from plus two. Iron is going from plus two over here. I'm not enjoying this. Iron is going from plus two coming down to iron. That's being reduced, red. And calcium is going from zero to plus two. So that's calcium zero to Ca plus two. That's being oxidized. Okay. So the question is, what about the agents? So if someone is being oxidized, the agent is the person doing the oxidizing. Oh, Mr. Duncan, why are you saying it's difficult? I think we all get it. Yeah, I, I really hope you do, Zyner, because this is stupid hard without understanding charges properly. And it's my, it's, it, we should have done bonding first. I should have just ignored all the order and done it anyway. But yeah, I find it quite frustrating. So an oxidizing, oxidizing agent. Yeah, an oxidizing agent. The chemical who oxidizes someone else. The chemical who oxidizes the other. Uh, so, if iron, I'm going to go back to that example, quite like that equation. So, Fe2 plus reacts with calcium, goes to calcium 2 plus and iron metal, right? That is going from very positive, it's being brought down, that's being reduced. Okay, so calcium is the reducing agent because the calcium is reducing the iron and itself being oxidized. <sighs> yeah, that's being oxed, which means this one is an oxy agent, an oxidizing agent. <sighs> it's just, this is level nine and it's too, too soon for you guys. Yeah, anyway. Uh, I've got a whole load of questions here that I wanted to go through, and I just feel a little bit irked by all of it. Uh, yeah, I don't... Oh, substance being oxidized. The equation for the reaction that occurs in some attractions for iron is this. That's weird. That's really weird. I don't even know why water's there. Right, identify the substance oxidized in this reaction. Give a reason for your choice. You see, you can't do that. That is GCSE, annoyingly. Oh, hang on a minute. No, you can. You can do it via oxygen. So being oxidized means gaining oxygen. Who's gaining oxygen? Substance oxidized is carbon. Reason, it's gaining oxygen. Ooh. <sighs> I'm giving up. I'm giving up. Which element is oxidized in the thermite? Oh, I found loads of questions on thermite, by the way. I thought you might like. I might just turn that into a, a homework for you, some, some for you guys to have a look at. Right. Guys, I feel thoroughly deflated by all of this. So I'm actually gonna oh, I'm actually gonna end my lesson at that point. I feel like I'm being forced to teach stuff out of order of which it should be taught, and I'm not happy about it. Not happy at all. <sighs> Come back to over here. Start cam. I've lost, I've lost everything. Bye, guys. I'm going to leave you guys be. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and I will... Uh, See you next lesson. We've got two more lessons and then your test. Yeah, so we're not going to get to your test before the end of before the end of the half term, but you'll have a test probably straight after the half term. I can actually just do one more lesson on this before you do your test. Can I please emphasize? I'm just going to emphasize some bits here. Number one, I want to emphasize to you guys. Oh, I'm just going to share my screen again. I'm just going to emphasize, uh, what does redox stand for? 
a chemical reaction where oxidation and reduction happen at the same time. Right, just letting you know, here is, here is why galvanizing protects. Yeah, learn those. Yeah, have a practice of combining half equations. Don't overthink it, keep it easy, practice these. I'm happy to give you some questions on them. Have a go at some of those. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you at that, guys. Uh, do watch the video back again, it will be useful. I'll post some homework questions for you guys to have a look at. Bye guys, I will see you all very soon. See you later guys.